Okay. Hey. <laughs> oh, no, no. Hello, animals. This week, we're talking about our fifth cubby, Desire. In any story, your main character should have a desire that they're pursuing. Commonly, your main character's desire is a specific, tangible goal. Like rescue a kidnapped loved one, find the buried treasure, acquire the golden fleece. Or your character could have a more intangible desire, like redemption, love, or respect. These types of desires are more abstract and commonly inform the theme of your story. Your character's desire could also be a little bit of both, tangible and intangible. Perhaps he wants redemption, and that's concretized in a specific circumstance. Say, can he save this sick little boy and his mother from the marauding bandits? In either case, it's a specific desire that your main character is actively striving for. A specific goal that they are trying to achieve. This desire propels your main character through the story. It gives them something to move towards and fight for. Your character's desire also gives your audience something to invest in. It gives them something to root for. When it comes to desires, going primal is the best idea. Primal desires are inherently understood by every human being out there, and they elicit a strong emotional response. Far and away, they are your best choice when crafting your character's desire. Primal desires, survival, freedom, love, sex, shelter, respect, food, water, meaning, forgiveness, justice, Redemption, power, acceptance, revenge. Clearly, this is not an exhaustive list. We call these primal desires because they're basic drives, basic needs and wants. And being so basic to the human experience, they inspire an immediate primal emotional response in not only your character, but your audience as well. A clearly defined desire gives your audience a sense of the scope of your story. Once they know your character's desire, they can immediately imagine the end game. They'll be able to picture a hypothetical goal line where they see the story resolving itself and the aim desire being achieved or lost. They'll know when the story's over when they've seen the desire acquired or not. If the audience feels powerfully for the character's desire, if they want it too, then they'll follow along intently as the character strives to achieve it right to the end. With all of this talk about emotions, you could see how these ideas would directly tie to the emotion cubby, which we'll be discussing in another few videos. But for right now, let's get a little more specific and talk about how to craft your desire line. What's the specific structure of it? Well, a solid desire line will have an overall desire broken down into smaller sub-desires. If-then statements are an effective shorthand for putting all this together. For example, your main character wants to break out of jail. That's his overall desire. Well, if John wants to break out of prison, then he's got to convince his cellmate to join in on the plan. So the sub-desire would be convince cellmate to join escape plan. Once this sub-desire is achieved, the cellmate is on board, they move on to the next sub-desire. If they want to break out of prison, then they gotta steal the guard's keys, and so on. Each smaller sub-desire is a step towards the ultimate larger desire. To create conflict in your story, you'll take these sub-desires and drop in roadblocks along the way. Specific setbacks that impede your character's plans. Let's talk about that next week when we discuss conflict. It's gonna be like a punch to the face.